Welcome to the Insightful Professor. With this video, we introduce a series intended to provide an introduction to database design. While some aspects of design are independent of the database management system that will ultimately be used, from one perspective, it doesn't matter whether you're going to deploy your data in a relational, hierarchic, or network database. However, in this series, we assume that the ultimate destination will be a relational system, such, such as Oracle Database. And as we progress through the videos, we'll be making comments using relational terminology. Thus, the intended audience for this video should have at least a basic understanding of relational database. The focus of this current video is to state the objectives of database design. That is exactly what we are trying to accomplish. Future videos will address logical database design, where we define the terminology and process of producing the actual database design. Because a design could be thought of as a blueprint from which a database can be built, we will address important aspects of implementing our design that is actually producing data definition statements to build the database that results from the design. It's at this stage that we might seriously consider performance of operations against the database, so we will consider adjustments to the logical design. We first need to consider what we mean by a database. A database, like other computer software, is a representation of the real world. An application domain refers to the specific world that will be modeled, hence the world we wish to represent by the database. A critical point of representing the real world is the accuracy or faithfulness of our representation to its real world counterparts. This is where we consider the concept of semantics. That is, what is meant by some particular data element? What are valid values of this data element? How do different objects or entities in the real world relate to one another? All of those questions pertain to semantics or data semantics. The points presented on this slide address the business requirements of a database. For what purpose is this database being designed and subsequently built? Who will use the database? How will they use the database? What types of questions can be answered from the data contained within this database? Some application domains have more detailed or subtle characteristics because a database is designed to capture characteristics of the application domain. Some databases are more complex than others. This complexity will be reflected in the design of the database for the application domain. We will see that the same design steps are going to be applied regardless of the application domain and the complexity of the domain. However, for some domains, it'll be necessary for more time and effort to be applied in order to acquire an accurate understanding of the semantics of the domain. The three schema architecture. Well, our description of a three schema architecture indicates a logical and a physical view of a database. The logical database view is concerned with the user's perception of the data. In a relational database, users see data as tables. That's the logical view. So thus logical database design is concerned with identifying the set of tables relevant to the application domain being modeled. The implementation of a logical database design will be concerned with physical matters, such as indexes, hashing, the ordering of rows, the size of a table, 
and the size of physical blocks. The physical view, also called the internal schema, describes how data will be physically stored and accessed using facilities of whatever the target DBMS is, thus implementing a relational design with DB2 versus Oracle versus SQL Server may take a slightly different path because these different database management systems offer different facilities or capabilities with respect to the physical implementation. The implementation details may be further influenced by the target DBMS due to the differences of the internal aspects of these relational products. However, logical database design is not concerned with subsequent implementation issues. This is something that comes later. It's not that we ignore it. We postpone it until a later point in the design process, a later stage. So the initial focus of database design is on the conceptual and logical views. That is what we call the logical design. By following a three schema architecture, we get benefits that programmers and users are insulated from the way data are physically stored in a database. This provides a concept of what we call data independence. Furthermore, different users of the database see only data relevant to them. They see a subset of the data. Note that in practice, the terminology that we're describing here, the formal terminology of conceptual, external, and internal schemas, is actually not widely used. The concepts are important. They will be understood by folks working with database, but they may not use the formal terminology as we presented it in this video. We have provided a little background with respect to database management. We saw that a database can be viewed from different perspectives, the three schema architecture. With this introduction, we are now ready to tackle the question of what is a database design? A simple answer is a database design is the specification of a collection of tables. Here we consider as an example the tables of an academic database. You see the faculty table, the department table, the student table, the course table. If we take a closer look at this model, it might suggest some questions. For example, which tables, if any, are related? How are the tables related? The column named CINSTR identifies the instructor for a course. Does this identify a row in the faculty table? Or could a student teach a course? Is it necessary to store both age of the student and the birth date? Could the age be calculated when needed? Asking the right questions requires an understanding of the application domain as well as knowledge of data modeling principles and techniques. There is not always a single correct database design. However, there must be some way to determine if the database design is accurate. Here we provide three points to consider when evaluating some database design. First and foremost, the design must satisfy the specified data requirements. Additional objectives or evaluation criteria are stability and efficiency. With respect to stability, a design must be easily adaptable to changes in user requirements. It pertains to the ease with which changes can be applied to an existing model. Efficiency addresses the use of storage and efficient access to data, the objective being good response time. Recall that the three schema architecture describes local and global views of data. Each of these is considered logical. These views describe the data content from a business perspective. 
they do not address how data are physically stored or organized. The physical view addresses details of the physical organization and storage of data. Users of the data are concerned only with the logical content and not with physical aspects of the data. Given that a database design can be separated into a logical component and a physical component, there are actually two models. The first being the logical model. This model results from the logical design process. It's also referred to as the relational design because we are attempting to design a set of tables. It's applicable to any relational database management system. So it's not unique to Oracle, not unique to SQL Server. It could be used by any relational system because we're simply identifying the tables. The second model is the physical model. This model results from the physical design process. Because the internals and implementation options differ from one product to another, this is something that will be product specific. When we go to the actual physical model, the way we implement it for Oracle could be different than what we do with DB2 or SQL Server because of what mechanisms are available within that specific DBMS. We advocate a top-down staged approach to database design, recognizing that design must consider different problems at different levels of detail. Each stage solves some part of the total design problem. Thus far, we have identified logical design as one problem, and physical design as a second problem. A stage design formalizes the design process by introducing formal design tools rather than relying on ad hoc design methods. The sequence of stages together with the design tools used at each stage are referred to as a design methodology. A design methodology includes an objective that indicates a starting point and a final goal, a process for achieving the objective where each step must identify the input, transformations applied, and the output that results. Guidelines for transformation processes when there are choices between them. And finally, standard documentation techniques for communicating the process and output of each step. In the staged approach, we start by taking one additional step back from the logical model. We have a conceptual model, a relational model, and a physical model. Recall that the relational model is logical. It describes the data as seen by application and business users. What we've done is we've extended the approach by adding a preliminary step, which we refer to as the conceptual model. With the conceptual model, the goal is to produce a non-technical description of an application domain. User requirement decisions are separated from technical design decisions. This three model approach, our staged approach, allows delaying consideration of implementation issues. Because the conceptual model is developed independent of the target DBMS, we don't use the terminology of the DBMS at this stage. For example, we do not use terms like table, row, column, referential integrity, and so on. The focus is on the business or organization being modeled. So we use business terminology, that is the terminology of the application domain. At this stage, we're actively communicating with the domain experts and ultimate users of the system. Therefore, we wish to use the vocabulary of the application domain. This is the vocabulary that these folks understand and use on a regular basis. The conceptual model serves as the main communication document between users and computer professionals, those doing the 
database design and those ultimately implementing the design and writing code for applications that will subsequently interact with the database. So the database design must effectively convey the data requirements to be met by the system and in so doing must be unambiguous, clear, and precise. It must be correct in terms of a representation of user requirements and it will use documentation techniques that are clearly understood by both the business users and the computer technical staff. The primary objective of data modeling is to produce a model that captures real-world data requirements in a simple and meaningful way that is understandable by the designer and business users. Because we produce a model of the application domain that uses the vocabulary of the domain, business users are able to easily understand the model. This is important because it allows the designer to verify the semantics. Remember that a database will be built or implemented based on this model. By developing a model that faithfully represents the real world, we are sure the resulting database will be an accurate representation of the application domain. The specification resulting from the database design process includes data items in the application domain, data relationships in the application domain, the way data are stored and accessed, the type of application access, whether it be online or batch, frequency with which data will be accessed, and the volume of data. So it's essential to know the data items and relationships in order to ensure that required data are stored in the database. Access requirements are used to structure data in a way that makes them easily accessible to users. Quantitative data are used to ensure sufficient storage capacity. Observe that some information identified here relates to the logical model and other information relates to the physical model. Although different people may perform the logical design and physical design, much of the information identified here can more easily be obtained during logical design. The database specification that results from the database design process generally consists of two components. The first is a diagram which we call the ER model or an entity relationship model. This diagram represents data structures reflecting what should be stored in the database. The diagram serves as a communication tool between the designer or the data modeler and the business users. The second component is a document called the data dictionary. This describes in detail the data objects, the relationships, the business rules required by the database. The data dictionary provides the detail required to construct the physical database. As we investigate database design, we will see that the diagram mentioned here conveys a great deal of information. However, it does not quite provide a complete picture by itself. The data dictionary provides greater detail and additional information regarding the application domain and the elements captured in our data model. Therefore, we need both components to satisfactorily construct the resulting database. Note that a database is not simply a data repository. Active processes or programs are needed to populate and maintain the database. These processes will serve to insert new data, update existing data, and access stored data to answer business questions. This last type of process may take the form of ad hoc queries or report generators. 
While a database without processes is of little value, we distinguish between the design of the database or data store and the design of the processes that perform operations on the data. A data model is concerned exclusively with the structures used to store the data. Such a model is not concerned with the movement of data between the structures. The development of a software system will consider a data model and also the processes that operate on that data. The processes are described through a separate model called a process model. Generally, the process model is outside the scope of the design of a database. We will be focusing on the data model alone. With this video, we have introduced a series intended to provide an introduction to database design. The focus of this current video was to state the objectives of database design by identifying exactly what we wish to accomplish. Future videos in this series will address other aspects of database design. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to be notified when these additional videos have been posted. And once again, thanks for watching. Thank you.